join us for a review of the Cupra Formentor exterior and interior. Let's go. Cupra, originally just a sporty version by Seat, is now an own brand and this is their first car that was specifically developed for the Cupra brand. So far they basically took the base Seat car and made them Cupra and this now is a Cupra from, you know, from the get-go. Of course they also share the same platform more in the side profile. In the front you can see here the copper logo accentuation next to a wide open sporty grille. 4 meters 45, 14 foot 6 or 175 inches is the length here of the Cupra Formentor. And as you might remember, there is one base platform for the Audi A3, the Golf 8, the Skoda Octavia and the Seat Leon. And A3 and Golf have the shorter wheelbase and the Leon and the Octavia have the longer wheelbase, which is also put here for the Cupra Formentor. The difference then is just about 6 millimeters, but that's just because of the rear exit construction, so not a real difference. But it means it will probably have a lot of legroom in the rear. We'll find out if that's the case. What is this vehicle? Well, it is so to say a crossover or SUV coupe. You can see it sits a little bit higher, has some kind of off-road character with these wheel arches, but they are painted in vehicle color. Yet again, it's sporty, for example, with these standard 19-inch wheels with 18-inch Brembo brakes. In the rear, of course, you see this beautiful light signature that goes all the way over the vehicle. And the black Cupra lettering right there. This matte color here, it's really cool. You see, like, you know, different light and shadow. This really helps with the vehicle. I really like matte colors. The disadvantage is, by the way, when you have small scratches, that can be a problem in polishing because you cannot polish a matte color. Then you need the whole replacement cards or have to live with the scratch. On the other hand, when there's a little bit of rain, the color, you know, it pretty much cleans themselves. You know, it's actually a quite cool effect then. Well, here in the lower area, you can see here black diffuser style, pretty massive, and four real exhaust here, sports exhaust. This is here the 310 horsepower all wheel drive turbo petrol engine. I was just busy in car hugging, you know. I like to hug the cars when they have matte colors. <laughs> Let's open the hood. And what do we have here? First of all, no gas strut. Yeah, I think for a Cooper model that should be the case. Anyways, let's talk about the engines. 2 liter TFSI, turbo petrol engine, 4 cylinder. It's also displayed right here, 4 cylinders. In this case, 310 horsepower, all wheel drive, front plus rear on demand. from the Golf or from Leon and the new generation but here then with a Cupra logo. You can also use the keyless entry, put your hand on the outside to close or here on the inside to open the door. Door closing sound. Very solid, nice. Then inside of the doors, 
here, top part is soft touch, then we've got the matte insert right there, and ambient lighting is integrated here, different colors will be available. In this case, there is a leather red inlet on the inside, but I guess it will also be available with, uh, with Alcantara, leather red here, then buttons, also with a nice clicking sound, reasonable door pocket. And there's a Cupra entry badge next to Cupra floor mat with this carbon fiber fabric style, so to say. And interesting that we have the copper, copper elements here as well and copper color contrast stitches. And this top material here is also soft, but you see it has some kind of mm, shiny coating or something. Very interesting. It looks, looks quite high class. Then the new steering wheel, first time we see that in this way. Also again with the copper elements, left side, the Cupra logo for changing the driving modes, like this, you know, you go like comfort and so on. And when you press and hold for two seconds, then you will directly go to the Cupra mode, the Sport M mode. Seats, they directly come here as bucket seats with the integrated head restraint in the top part. The standard would be then outside like it is with the leatherette, but inside then with the Alcantara, that would be the standard choice. This is the optional animal skin choice where you spend more in summer and it's colder in winter times. That's the practical reason not to go for it. The other, of course, the ethical issue. However, the seat form will be the same in the Alcantara seat and it's actually a good seating position. And I also already know some other seats from the Octavia, from the Golf and from the Leon and so on. And they offer actually quite good support. It uh, depends on some say um, that the sport seat is more comfortable to them, to them. Actually, some others say yeah, it depends and others say the sport seat less comfortable. It's a personal thing, definitely. I found them quite good here now, um, but the normal seats, so for example, we know from Leon, they were also quite nice so far. We will have to test them on a longer journey, definitely. Then the steering wheel can be put in and out and up and down, easy good solution and also very wide out there and it has a good size and when I put the seat all the way down this is equipped with panoramic roof and with 1 meters 86 or 6 foot 1 there's enough headroom left if you want more then you would leave out the panoramic roof but also of course leaves a lot of light in now the interior overview first of all what you saw also earlier here this special coating for the soft touch dashboard is really cool and look you know how sharp the edge, not in like a way that's sharp for the finger, but sharp and design wise. This thing is very cool done. And again, the copper elements right there and matte surfaces here. So I think they really got a good premium touch to that in this case. Then you have the virtual cockpit here on the left side, Sumo deals to that. On the right side, a new 12 inch screen, really large, that really like pops up to the eye, literally. We'll also experience everything of that together very soon. You know, as for the functionality, already one thing in advance for the temperature, they use these sliders here once again. We know that from the Leon as well. And um, you can also click like this. They also get the sound. Um, however, like sliding is easier, but hmm, controlling it while driving, I don't know. Here's also the volume control, but I would do that just from the steering wheel then. Then in the lower area, two USB-C devices, then you can connect your phone, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Apple CarPlay also available in a wireless way. Inductive charging pad is also right there. Then you can, <laughs> yeah, for the Cooper, a separate button to deactivate the stability control systems. Yay! And then there's the DSG, which would be standard with this engine version. And now a closer look at this massive 12 inch screen. Nah. That's your, that was your thought now. That was your thought. So <laughs> let's go here. We can go left and right and you can individualize everything. So you can also set your own home screen, so to say. Apple CarPlay is then, for example, here. It doesn't go all the way over the screen, but I think the integration is fine because then you're not relying here on the Cupra icon. You can also press this button to go back to the main Cupra menu. And then there's the optional Beats sound system in this vehicle here. Let's see how that one turns out. It's of course a nice song, but... What do you think, Jonas? It's okay. Yeah, he says okay. Hmm. Yeah, I think satisfied with that for a compact vehicle, definitely. Let's go back here. You can see again how the CarPlay works. 
and we go back to the Cupra menu. Um, the overview here in the lower part is quite okay, but overall I think the whole visualization hmm, is hard really to describe it, but I'm not super happy with that. Not a rear compartment, same design styling, but here, as we know from this new platform, always hard pack at the rear. This is some of the cost saving measures. However, we got a soft leather right in the lower areas, for example. Also, the special floor mat design in the rear and the same rear seat design. But you can also see that we have two USB C chargers in the middle over the tunnel and the rear climate unit. And the question is now with these sport seats about the legroom, because you see they are quite voluminous, quite thick. And this maybe cost you some legroom. Yeah, I think so. Um, if I remember with the Leon, they had the same wheelbase. There was a little bit more legroom. However, because of this increased wheelbase, considering last year and Leon generation and so on, here also in the Cupra Formentor, you have really reasonable legroom. So that's totally fine. You are still in the compact segment. So I think a good use of space overall. And considering it's also, it's a, SUV or crossover coupe style, we still have enough headroom also in the rear. So actually for a compact size vehicle, good offering of space, it's comfortable. And this is again, even the one with the panoramic roof where you profit as a rear passenger because you have a better look to the front, especially when you know you look to a skyline or something. Yet again, we miss is enough to have a lot of space in the rear. The boot capacity here is about 450 liters, and that's less than in a Seat Ateca, but more than in a Seat Leon hatch. However, if you go with plug-in hybrid, it would be 345 liters, you lose a little bit of height then. But here then, the petrol engine all-wheel drive version, sound equipment in the rear, you could also put replacement tire around that, there's a solution for that. And now to the conclusion for today with the new Cupra Formentor. First of all, very interesting to see this first standalone vehicle by Cupra. Of course, they do share same platforms. That's also something that is very natural and you couldn't even afford building cars anymore if you wouldn't do that. From the exterior, a very sporty look, definitely also in this matte color strong accentuations on the hood and so on and this coupe style with a strong shoulder so i think it works very well and also this compromise between you know crossover-ish look and then the sporty elements that inherit here with the cooper brand also a lot of standard equipment with this vehicle so we're looking forward to the final pricing the interior is a high build quality general yeah i mean the cost saving with this new platform from the rear doors on the inside that's maybe the only thing but other than that you have a lot of space on the interior especially also with the rear leg room due to this new longer wheelbase wheelbase platform and also in the trunk you know so there's not a real bad compromise just because you have a design look on the exterior that you don't have too much space on the interior you will get along with that very well the only thing I found in the interior a little bit disturbing is maybe the software look of that infotainment system that I think could be done better and that when you're mainly using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto anyway, the integration of that is good and then you'll also be just fine with that. Yeah, I like climate knobs, you know, the classic ones, sliders right here. Other than that, you find a lot of copper elements and, you know, like from the surfacing finish, also some new ideas we see here and of course the standard Alcantara bucket seats that will also be another addition to the lineup here. As for the engines, of course the most performant version here today we've shown to you, not in driving yet, this will follow very soon and I think you know the two engines that start with the vehicle will probably be the most important ones also because either you go like top spec or the more economic one or a little bit more yeah, with the electric moments than with the plug-in hybrid maybe also because of tax savings in your respective country it will be very important in germany for example where you have even more tax benefits meanwhile for these plug-in hybrid versions so what do you think here about the new cupra from and tour tell us your comments and also we can compare them look to the video description or in the pinned comment we have some other siblings or relevant cars which you could approximately compare with this one here or maybe as an alternative check out these reviews as well and see you next time